this comprehensive guide to Call of Dragons is perfect for all players. Whether you're just beginning your journey in the game or seeking expert tips to enhance your existing account, this video has everything you need to dive into the game with confidence and make the most of your gameplay experience. So stick around in this video for the most comprehensive guide ever created for Call of Dragons. Today, I'm thrilled to share my expertise on creating an extraordinary account in Call of Dragons, maximizing the resources at your fingertips. If you're as passionate about this kind of content as I am, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'm dedicated to delivering top-tier strategies to empower you, ensuring you conquer your foes and emerge victorious. And if you appreciate the effort, please show your support by smashing that like button. It's my way of honoring our shared quest for the best possible gaming experience, starting faction the very beginning. And the only thing you need to know about your spreading faction is that it will give you more tokens of a hero so you can advance their skills more. You'll have a quest series that is going to give you those tokens. So I would recommend you pick the League of Order because Waldir is by far the best hero of your starting factions. Waldir is a player versus player hero. And he's a mage and he's exactly what I would recommend you use. While Gornwyn excels in player versus environment activities, it's important to remember that the ultimate challenge lies in facing off against other skilled players, while Wilderberg has its appeal for inventory management. It's crucial to consider using a ranged march, especially if you're new to the game or unsure about your strategy. This choice can make a significant difference in your overall success. Selecting the right server is indeed a crucial decision and I highly recommend opting for the newest server for a level playing field and fair competition. Unless you have specific plans to join friends on an older server, starting fresh on the latest server ensures an exciting and balanced gaming experience. League of Order is certainly the straightforward option, and if you're interested in unique units from a different faction or the faction-specific bonuses, there's no need to worry. Once you reach City Hall level 10, you can seamlessly switch factions to tailor your gameplay to your preferences. Flexibility is key, and this feature ensures you can explore various aspects of the game without any concerns. So now let's get a look at the buildings. Absolutely, the first step in your journey is upgrading your buildings, and among them the City Hall takes the spotlight. Depending on your faction choice, it might be named differently. In my case, it's the Hall of Order due to my selection of the League of Order. This structure acts as the critical bottleneck for advancing the level of every other building in your city. Always make it your top priority, as it's the foundation upon which the growth of your city rests. Do not level every building. Equally only do the prerequisites for the Hall of Order and get that thing leveled up as fast as you can. There are two exceptions, however, every time you get a new level on your Hall of Order, as soon as you can make the Alliance Center, you should make that building and you should level it up as fast as possible. After getting a new City Hall level because the Alliance Center allows other members of your Alliance to help you and helping reduces the time it takes to either do research or build. Emphasizing the importance of upgrading your College of Order or the equivalent Research Center depending on your faction is crucial. This building expands your research options and boosts research speed progressively. It should be your second priority after leveling up your city hall to a new tier. Beyond this, focus on achieving the prerequisites necessary for advancing to the next city hall level. This approach ensures efficient progression. Avoid leveling all buildings uniformly as this would drain resources and hinder your overall advancement in the game. Prioritize wisely to maintain a swift and streamlined progression path. Indeed, the city features numerous essential buildings that deserve attention. Let's briefly touch upon a significant set, your troop training centers. The key objective here is to keep these centers operational around the clock. Consistent troop training along with continuous research and building efforts should be your primary aim in the game. Leveling up your troop training centers serves several crucial purposes. Firstly, it allows you to train a larger number of troops simultaneously ensuring you can keep them training even when you're not actively playing, such as during work or sleep hours, maintaining a continuous 24 nave end training cycle. It's even worth using a small amount of speed-ups before bedtime to queue up additional training that will run overnight, fully utilizing the time when you can't access the game. There are five distinct troop training categories. Infantry, archers or marksmen, 
cavalry, which also includes the gathering unit. We'll discuss later mages and your special unit. For the League of Order, this special unit is known as the Celestial. Each of these units has its unique role and attributes in the game, making the troop training buildings an essential part of your city's development. Let's quickly touch on some other buildings. The Scout Camp is crucial for map exploration, higher levels mean faster moving scouts, extended exploration range, and increased scout numbers, facilitating quicker and more thorough map scouting. This enables you to gather valuable information from the entire map at a faster pace. Now let's shift our focus to hospitals. We'll delve deeper into healing mechanics later, but for now understand your hospitals dictate the amount of healing you can perform each day, whether it's through free healing or using resources. These structures are pivotal for your city's survival and managing casualties effectively. Next up is the storehouse, a key player in protecting your resources. Its level determines the amount of resources shielded during an enemy attack. The higher the storehouse level, the more it shields. However, the most critical strategy is keeping your city within your alliance's territory, providing an invaluable safety net. This prevents attacks. Ensuring you won't lose resources, a fundamental aspect we'll discuss in greater detail. Ensuring your city's location within alliance territory is a vital safeguard in Call of Dragons. From here we can talk about the Watchtower, which will sort of protect your city and I'll just simply say, this does far less than you think it's more of just a prerequisite for other buildings than it is something that actually protects you. Now let's address the Rally Beacon. This building is essential for determining the maximum troop capacity in your rallies, a critical factor for rally leaders. However, in the early stages of the game, you needn't stress over this too much. While crucial for advanced gameplay, it's not an immediate concern at the beginning. Focus on the basics and gradually, as you progress, you'll find the significance of these structures becoming more pronounced. The wall is another pivotal building in your city. It serves as a defensive hub where you can designate your city's defenders. This is essential for safeguarding your city from potential attacks. You can create multiple defender combinations, allowing for layered defense strategies. If your primary defender combination is unavailable due to being away from the city, the secondary, tertiary, fourth and fifth options will automatically step in based on the heroes present in your city and those outside it. Properly utilizing these defender combinations ensures your city's safety against potential threats. The wall is definitely important, because when your wall's durability hits zero, I believe that your city is ported away from its location. That is very difficult to do, though your wall would have to be burning for quite a while. Another building that is sort of important is your alliance market. This won't really affect you much at the start of the game, other than being a prerequisite for other buildings. Your market will determine the amount of resources you can send at a time. It will determine the amount of resources you can plunder from other players. And it will also determine the amount of resources you can be sent per week. In addition, there is a tax rate whenever you send resources the higher level. The building is the less you get taxed for sending resources. So if you are going to transfer resources for some reason season, the higher level the building the better. The production buildings and resource management are vital aspects. There are four key resources in the game. Gold, wood, stone and mana, with gold and wood being the most abundant. It's essential to exercise caution with resource management. I strongly recommend avoiding unnecessary resource openings. When you have your resource stores open, they become vulnerable to plunder by other players. Even though my understanding is that mana can't be plundered, it's still a wise practice not to open it needlessly. Keep your resources closed unless you're immediately using them for construction, research, or other essential activities, this cautious approach minimizes the risk of losing valuable resources, a principle you should adhere to throughout the game. The Goblin Market is a crucial structure for trading and obtaining valuable items. There are several ways to engage with the Goblin Market. Discounted offers. Periodically, the merchant will appear with discounted items that you might find appealing. These items could require either gems or resources, offering you advantageous deals. Trading items. You can also trade in items such as tokens for heroes you no longer need. This allows you to exchange redundant items for potentially more valuable resources or items, enhancing your overall progress. The Goblin Market presents opportunities to optimize your resources and make strategic trades, contributing to your growth in the game. It's a feature worth exploring for its potential benefits.
To unlock the best heroes in Call of Dragons, you must draw a gold or silver chest. You will be able to open both these types of chest only if you have its key. When you start the game, then you definitely have these two keys. Let's talk more in depth and let's start with research. Research is really critical in Call of Dragons and there's some research that matters more than others. There are two trees of research in this game. You have economic technology and war technology. The critical economic technology is your architecture which influences your building speed, your scholarship which influences your research speed, your breath control which influences the rate with which you work cover combat points or command points and also military leadership which influences the speed with which your heroes level up. These are things you want to max as soon as you possibly can. Because they give you economy in different ways, the building speed makes it so you can build up your city faster. The research speed makes is you can progress your research more right and the commander experience and also breath control, which gives you combat point recovery. Or command point recovery is really critical in leveling up your heroes. These are things you want to max as soon as you possibly can. The other things are less important to us. They matter, but you can do them in time. But always max out your architecture as fast as you can. Always max out your scholarship as fast as you can, even when you unlock higher and higher levels of it. Because it gives you scale, it gives you efficiency for more things that you do in the game. In the realm of combat, the paramount objective is advancing to new tiers of troops. This stands as a primary focus. Strive to achieve the minimum requirements to unlock each new tier of troops. The progression unfolds as follows. Tier 2 troops, initiated by green troops. Tier 3 troops, progressing to blue troops. Tier 4 troops, evolving into purple troops. Tier 5 troops, culminating in gold troops. This progression signifies the heart of your combat strategy. Securing these tiers is critical for your long-term success. Be aware that attaining the highest tier of troops Tier 5 can often take around a year for many players due to the necessary investments and time commitment involved. Having a second research queue running can significantly enhance your efficiency in the game. The store offers a variety of items, bonuses and features, and VIP is one of these features. VIP levels unlock numerous benefits, including the ability to run two research queues simultaneously. This feature greatly accelerates your research progress, enabling you to multitask and optimize your growth, therefore paying attention to the store and the benefits it offers, such as VIP enhancements, can greatly enhance your gameplay experience. Prioritizing the attainment of VIP level 8 should be a key focus. Achieving this level grants you a second research queue, a highly advantageous feature. This priority should take precedence over nearly all other gem expenditures, Barring one important consideration, an additional building queue, available for 5,000 gems or for $5, is a significant investment that greatly enhances your gameplay experience. However, the second research queue remains a more critical priority. Channel your gems predominantly into VIP progression, because at VIP level 8, you not only gain the second research queue, but also a 5 boost to research speed. This translates to a similar effect as a 24-hour speed-up for each research or building project respectively. This Viping investment significantly optimizes your progress by allowing research to be conducted around the clock. Other more thing you get at VIP level 8 that is super worth is you start getting a legendary token every day you get to select which hero you want a token of which is a nice. You know epics are great, but the legendaries are obviously much stronger. So that's one more reason why moving to VIP 8 gives you a long-term benefits. We'll talk more about heroes in next video. VIP level also grants you access to an exclusive store. In this store, you have the option to utilize either resources or gems to acquire vital items and resources. The offerings within the store can be influenced by your VIP level level, granting you access to certain items as you progress. This store provides a valuable avenue for obtaining essential resources and items that can greatly enhance your gameplay. 
It adds another layer of strategy to consider when managing your resources and gems, ensuring that you can access important supplies to boost your progression. I suggest allocating your resources towards acquiring CPA Command Point recovery items. These items hold exceptional importance, particularly if you're investing significantly in the game. While advanced players might explore options like keys, speedups, and artifacts, it's vital to remain focused, prioritize command point recovery items, as they play a pivotal role in maintaining an active and competitive gameplay. Be cautious of distractions like spending gems on speedups or other items, especially if you haven't yet reached Vipe level 8 or if you don't possess enough gems to participate in key events like the Lucky Wheel. Ensuring your resources align with your strategic priorities and opportunities will be crucial for your long-term success. Let's delve into one more essential building. The Notice Board. This becomes accessible around City Hall Level 8, though its name can vary based on your chosen faction. Within this structure, a crucial element is the throne icon representing your policies. Policies, particularly the seasonal ones indicated by this icon, serve as an additional avenue for research and development. These seasonal policies offer yet another dimension to enhance your gameplay, resetting at the conclusion of each season. By focusing on and leveraging these policies, you're tapping into a strategic layer that complements your overall research efforts. Integrating these policies effectively can lead to significant advancements in various aspects of your in-game progress. These policies are critical to your development, and they take a special currency, not resources, like your regular research. They take what's called prestige. You can get your prestige a couple ways. One is that there are going to be holy sites called behemoths, and those behemoths have guardians around them. When you defeat the behemoth guardians, get a small amount of prestige you. Also get the majority of your prestige from a thing called the dragon trail, unlike your regular research, which you can speed up in the policy center. You can only spend gems now. It doesn't matter how many hours the research takes you spend 80 gems, and it will rush whatever that research is. You still need to have, however, the prestige in order to start that research during the start of a new season. There are several policies within the policy center that demand your attention. Prioritize these for optimal progress. Military expansion. Boosting the number of troops in your march significantly enhances your combat capabilities increasing your potential for success in battles, artifact expertise, and war studies. Focusing on these policies grants you more artifact and hero experience, respectively. These boosts have a direct impact on enhancing your overall strength. However, there's a crucial choice that you must make carefully. When selecting a healing policy, it's imperative to opt for free healing rather than resource-based healing. This decision holds significant weight and should not be taken lightly. Ultimately, you need to choose one of these options. Prioritize wisely based on your current gameplay needs and strategies. Congratulations! You've now completed Part 1 tutorial for the epic game Call of Dragon. In Part 2, we'll be diving even deeper into the gameplay mechanics, uncovering advanced strategies, and revealing some of the game's best-kept secrets. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update from our channel.